the meantime, uh, we mentioned Jacob Tammy, the Broncos tight end, who's played for the Broncos the last three years and before that had a lengthy career with the Indianapolis Colts. We caught up with him this morning from Dove Valley. Jacob, you're looking well rested. Uh, this was a, a nice respite for the last couple of weeks, not just for you, a veteran, but for this whole team. You really needed it, didn't you? Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, I think one of the great things about earning that bye during the regular season, uh, we definitely had a lot of guys that could use it. Um, you know, I've been banged up a little bit the last few weeks. Uh, a lot of guys more banged up than me. You know, uh, I think overall a really good thing for our team uh, to get healthy and uh, get a few days to rest your mind a little bit. And uh, we came back out and had a good day today, had a good lift yesterday, good workout. And um, I think we'll uh, start off this, re uh, this week uh, on the right foot. Hey, as a guy who's played a total us. of nine playoff games in your career with Indy and the last few years with the Broncos, do you, do you have to change your mindset or is it pretty much the same mindset as, as during the regular season? How do things ratchet up? Well, I think it's, there's a little bit of both, I think. I think in one sense, there's definitely something to the idea of, you know, we're going to do what we do. Um, we're going to just continue playing at the type of level we've been playing. Um, obviously, we've had a couple of hiccups during this. You know, we had as good a regular season as anybody else, but we still didn't, you know, get everything done we wanted to get done. So I think we're still trying to improve. I think you got to uh, take the mindset that it's nothing, there's really nothing different. You know, you just got to go do what we practice. Because you don't want to get too hyped up in that in that manner. Because you're gonna, on game day, you know the hype comes. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna feel the emotion and all that stuff. So, I think the key is, in one sense, just to practice like we always practice, prepare very hard, and then on Sunday just kind of go, go let it loose, just like you do every other week. Um, in another sense, you got to kind of prepare the young guys for the speed of the game, picking up the intensity. You know, it, it's out there every week, but there's something in the playoffs that's a little bit different. Uh, when you got that opportunity to go give yourself a shot for a world championship, you know, everything just naturally, I think, gets a click. Faster. You know, you use the phrase hyped up, and everybody like, likes to talk about how Peyton is going against his old team. Well, you're going against your old team, too. Does this hype you up a little bit more going against the Colts? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know everybody's. Uh, you know, get excited about that that part of it. You know, I go in there and uh, the reporters are joking around about uh, Tammy <laughs> versus Indy part three. Uh, but I think uh, obviously the first time going back to Indy was, every, you know, just a big hoopla for Peyton. And um, I think even the opener this year, you know, the second time around. So, you know, it's, it's the third time we've played them since, since I left Indy. Um, I don't think at this point, you know, there's been so much turnover there anyway since I was there. Um, it, it's nothing really different, honestly, for me at this point. It's just about uh, doing my part to find a way to help us win, uh, whatever that part ends up being. So I think um, at the end of the day, there won't be quite as much focus on this, uh, that part of it as there has been. You know, it's funny. You guys smashed every offensive record practically last year. Uh, this year, the numbers were still pretty good. You guys were second in the league in offense. Uh, Peyton threw for 39 touchdowns, uh, almost well, 4,800 yards. So pretty much by any normal standards, a pretty good year for this offense and for Peyton. But you know, I'm sure you've heard the, the talk. I'm sure you've heard the whispers. People are concerned about the offense. Is it a, a, a rush-oriented offense? Is it a pass-oriented offense? Why have you had trouble finding? What's going on, Jacob? Do you feel you guys have a good rhythm going now? Do you guys feel with the commitment to the run now and with the fact that, that Peyton has had some pretty good halves at least over the last few games, you guys are ready to peak going into the playoffs offensively and what has been the problem exactly the last couple of oh I don't know month month and a half well peaking right now is certainly the plan I think uh, you mentioned at the beginning of, of that question last year's statistics which I think in a lot of ways are a, are a tough bar to come back and uh, exceed I think this year what we've seen over the last four five six seven weeks is you know, more of a commitment to the running game um, than really any time in the last couple of years, probably. Um, guys on the O line uh, doing a great job, uh, running backs doing a great job. You know, I think at the end of the day, we're probably a more balanced offense than we've been in, in a while, and I think that's going to serve us well. So, you know, problems and whatever, I don't really know. I don't listen to a lot of stuff on the outside. Uh, have we performed to the way we want to perform every single time? Uh, no, no way. 
but uh, do we feel like we're in a good place to put out uh, playoff winning type performances, you know, as a team and on offense? Uh, hey, last absolutely. thing, do you think Peyton does get a little more jacked up because it's an in, it's Indianapolis and it's uh, his heir apparent playing quarterback for the Colts? Can you see that in him? You know him. You know him as well as anybody. Uh, yeah, I really don't know, to be honest. I mean, there's probably – there's always something there, um, you know, as it relates to that. You know, he was there for, for so long, you know, it's hard to not have a little bit of edge when it comes to that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I don't really know. I know one thing for sure. Uh, he wants to give ourselves a chance to go win another AFC championship and get another shot at finishing it the right way like we want to in the last one. So that's all really that this – building over here is focused on right now not the whole you know Indy versus Denver you know Peyton and all that sort of luck type of deal so uh, at the end of the day we're pretty focused on doing whatever it takes to give ourselves a shot uh, to get back well, and Jacob finish really right appreciate way. your time and um, you know it's 40 45 degrees out you really should have a coat on I don't want you to get sick before Sunday's game <laughs> it's actually really nice out here you know and um, I figure if you can see any snow behind me, I might look tough. I don't know. Uh, no, I see a little nice. snow in, in your hair. I see a little gray coming in on top. <laughs> hey, get right. wiser. Hey, I good guess. luck on Sunday, Jacob. That's Broncos tight end Jacob Tammy. For people and, who haven't seen the, the new building, it was. Yeah, no uh, kidding. It's pretty cool. Uh, Jacob's appearance brought to you by Papa John's when you watch the game on Sunday. Buy a Papa John's pizza. You'll thank me for it later. Papa John's, and better the, ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. And after they win on Sunday, the next day, you can get 50% off That's online. That's right. That's right. right. Order <laughs> online. And, and be sure and put that garlic butter sauce on there. <laughs> oh, you laugh. You laughed and you I loved, loved it. it. I loved it. You loved it. Great, where's, where's great our, recommendation. Where's our pizza today? Uh, I, I want to take the last thing that you brought up. I had looked at the weather forecast yesterday. Because everybody was saying, oh, they got to go out to Denver. It'll be cold. It'll be like doing blah, blah, blah. It's going to be 47 degrees at kickoff. So it's going to be, and, and 47 degrees here is like 62 in, in Boston. So Well, yeah. that's what they're saying now. Might I remind you, and, and I've got to apologize to all my friends who do weather in this town. Um, oh, on, Friday, on Friday, they predicted for Saturday 32 degrees, sunny, and breezy. And we got three freaking inches of snow, and I don't think it got above 20 sure. degrees. Well, Bill all day Belichick long. pointed so, out this year the only people that are wrong all the time, this is Bill Belichick, our weather forecast. And are able to keep and their jobs. I didn't go, forgive me, I didn't go to the backyard in Channel 9. I didn't go to all the double, triple, <laughs> do, triple, double Dopplers and all of that. I went to Weather Yahoo, which actually knows what it's doing. And it went through the forecast, and it said it's going to be a nice week, a mild. Denver, yeah, and it will be 47 I saw that. and not much wind on Sunday. So I would guess that by the fourth quarter it'll be 40, but it's not going to be 22 or like the Baltimore Ravens game a couple of years ago when it was down into the teens, I think. So I think that I, weather I, is not going to be a major factor, I, except the Colts are so used to playing indoors, exactly. And I wonder if 10 years from now. People are going to be talking about Andrew Luck the same way they've been talking about Peyton Manning. Oh, he's an indoor quarterback, and even when he's outdoors in his division, it's warm weather. And he played at Tennessee, and it was warm weather. Well, Andrew Luck, same stuff, and played at Stanford, where it was always nice weather. Yeah. And uh, he has not won. A, I, Andrew Luck has not won a playoff game on the road. Adam Vinatieri uh, hit three or four field goals in the Cincy game. Yeah, and they were talking about he had missed one at home. The, at home since the opening game of 2013. Well, yeah, that's why Morton Anderson is almost in the Hall of Fame. He played his whole career in Atlanta where you play half your games. Yeah, perfect indoors. conditions. So kickers will tell you. Jason Elam left here to go to Atlanta so he could finish his career indoors. Uh, it's just funny. I think uh, Jacob is kind of expressing what the Broncos would say, that there's a quiet confidence. There's the fact that they got the week off that was really important to them to get a lot of people like Brandon Marshall better off, Juice Thomas, even Peyton Manning. Because I wonder, yeah. really, if his injury wasn't a little bit uh, tougher than we realized. It happened in San Diego. He plays somewhat poorly in Cincinnati. I think he went through that period last year, remember, where after... He had an ankle. The ankle that... They, he got he hurt got in Indy. In Indianapolis, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it probably helped Peyton Manning more than anybody. Well, here's yeah. the other thing we know. 
as you get older, it takes a little longer to recover. From everything. You know, you know Chris Harris, <laughs> ACL, boom, he's back on the field. It seemed like a week later. Uh, Peyton Manning, strains uh, of thigh, a month you, later, he's we, still we looking go, around For a little people bit. who don't know, yeah. we go straight through for two hours so we don't get to... Uh, on the other shows I do where you take a break for five minutes and whatever yeah. you did because I would respond to you about as you get older it takes longer to respond yeah it does <laughs> in every way possible yeah and if that if you're taking what you think you're taking from that it's okay in the Denver Post sports section there there are ads for sexual dysfunction all the time <laughs> so hey in a couple of minutes we're going to go back out to Dove Valley and we're going to talk to uh the, the post beat writer for the Denver Broncos, Troy Rank, One and, of the and two. get his take on what's going on. I think that pair is the best in the country. We've yeah, got Troy good. Rank and uh, Mike Kliss. Um, you, uh, you think Peyton does get a little more jacked up for Indianapolis? I don't think so. Cause I even, think a little, even a little kind of, bit? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I have been around him enough to know that he keeps a very level head during the course of the, the week in terms of his preparation. Because you could say every week, oh, it's Peyton Manning against Philip Rivers. Think about that. Sure. Every week, oh, it's Tom Brady. If he got caught up in that, and I think he learned in he, college. Yeah, he'd be worn that, out by game seven. Uh, that, yeah. that if you allow yourself, <laughs> and you and I have covered Super Bowls. I have covered, uh, forgive me, every major event in the whole world. And the only way that I felt like I could do it was treat it like it was every week. Because I think that if you, even as a journalist, broadcaster, go to the Super Bowl and go, oh, I remember the columnist at the Boulder Camera, and he reminded me about this during the season. He's now moved on. But when, when Colorado came back against Michigan, the miracle in Michigan, and Cordell Stewart threw that uh, right. Hail Mary to win, and the Boulder ca uh, Camera columnist turned to me and said, this is too big. I can't handle it. It's too big. <laughs> Seriously? Well, you can't go to the Super Bowl. And I remember in, in uh, uh, let's take New England when New England well, won. When we're surprise. off the air, I want to know the name of that columnist. <laughs> well, yeah. not, not on the air. I don't yeah. want to embarrass well, him. Well, he was in Boulder. <laughs> but uh, there was the game, the Giants and New England, uh, when, the, when the Patriots were 17-0 and 0 going into the right. game. And, and a lot happened at the end of the game that you can't allow that to get in your way. So not to compare my situation with Peyton Manning, but knowing Peyton, what he does is he gives that Wednesday press conference. He probably spends more time thinking about it, preparing for that press conference than he does during the week. He's looking at the team. He will look at players that he played with and against yeah. to remember their tendencies. But I don't think, I would guess that when he goes home at night to his very nice house uh, south of Hampton in southeast Denver, Shh. that he and his wife... Don't give the address. Everybody knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you, when he goes home, that he'll say to his wife, you know, well, we got Indy coming into town. And she go, oh, you know, it's a big game for you. And they'll, over the dinner table, they'll talk well, about see, it. See, uh, you know what I always think about in these situations? I, see, I think there's got to be a, a little bit, a little no, bit of him. No, you just, no, you're. Well, yeah. All right, you remember when Mike Shanahan got fired by the Raiders? Yeah, well, that was he, a totally different. That was a he, bitter well, kind of. He, he not only got fired, it was, a, it was an acrimonious situation, a really acrimonious situation. And Al Davis allegedly owed him. $250,000 that Al decided he would never pay Mike. Well, he so, did owe it to him. So, so well, allegedly, he did owe it to him. When Mike became the head coach here, um, he always spent a little more time in the office. You mean like? A little more time with the, with the uh, projector going over the Raiders and, and, and coming up with a game yeah. plan. Because he didn't want to just beat them. He wanted to beat them You badly. think it was, how about a and specific, it went on for years. A specific you know incident where he asked the quarter, he told the quarterback he'd give him five bucks if he threw a pass. During warm-ups. During warm-ups to hit Al Davis? Yeah. That's what it was like. Let's so, go out. So I Let's, always think there's, there's a little bit there. I guess.